We have a special guest in the studio this morning, Keith Ritchie. Good morning, Keith. Good morning. How are you? I am good. Thank you. Keith is an outreach coordinator with the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority. And Keith, I'm glad you're here on Christmas Eve Eve because mm-hmm. a lot of schools in our area are out this week and some next week. So I hope a lot of high school students are listening this morning because you have some very good information for them, for those that are planning to go to college. And you joined us from Richmond this morning, so we're glad you made the trip. First of all, let's talk about the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority, who you are and what services you offer people, students, getting ready to go to college. Absolutely. Well, well, we're oftentimes referred to as KEA, K-H-E-A-A. We're a state agency through the state of Kentucky, and we're the people that divvy out all the state financial aid for college. Um, and, and really what we focus on is we connect the dots for middle school to high school and from high school to whatever it is a student wants to do after high school. If they want to go to a traditional classroom environment like a traditional university, like an EKU or UK, something like that, we're all for it. I understand, and I know from experience, I've got some buddies from high school, they wouldn't take a million dollars to step foot in a regular classroom after 12th grade. If you know someone who is like that, that's okay. We've got some alternate uh, routes to go. For instance, our community college and technical college system here in the state of Kentucky, one of the best in the entire country. And I tell students this all the time. If you know someone who doesn't want to go to, uh, to a traditional college, those types of schools might have something like diesel mechanics, welding, some of those more hands-on degrees. So really what we focus on is education. That, that's really what we're all about because it's simple. The reason why we focus so much on education, study after study after study for years and years and years, has all shown that students who have some sort of education beyond high school, two things happen to them. One, they end up making more money on average per year. And two, they have an easier time finding a job. So that's really what, why we do what we do. A lot of people might not be familiar with our name, Kia, but a lot of them are familiar with some of our state aid programs. Probably our most popular would be Keys Money. Uh, and Keys Money is a state scholarship program that we divvy out throughout the state of Kentucky that every student in Kentucky has the ability to earn. Uh, but what I personally do at Kia, I'm an outreach counselor. There's 13 of us. Every single county in the state of Kentucky is serviced by at least one outreach counselor. We're going to talk more specifically about Keys coming up in the program, but high school seniors especially and parents this morning of high school seniors, pay attention to Keith because he's going to give you some information on how to get some financial aid assistance for college. And the financial aid money in Kentucky, actually across the country, it does run out. So Keith is going to talk us through step-by-step what you need to do as someone getting ready to enter college on how to prepare for your finances for college to get that financial aid. So, Keith, let's assume a high school senior who is wanting to go to college has done absolutely nothing in terms of the financial aid process. What's step number one? Step number one is apply to the colleges that the student may be interested in possibly going to next school year. Well, we always try to tell people the earlier the better to get your applications in, and it's more of a strategic reason than anything. Think about it in terms of competition. If you wait until the deadline to get your application in just for admission consideration to a school, it could be very competitive at that point. They may only have two spots left because they only have so many dorm rooms, so many teachers to teach the classes, and so forth. So what we try to tell our students in the state of Kentucky, get those applications in as soon as possible. If you haven't applied to a college yet, now's the time to go ahead and get those applications in. So get the admission part done first. Step two is when we start flipping a switch and we turn that corner from admission to financial aid because that's the big one that that parents are certainly concerned about is. And that's what we need to do right now, financial aid right now. Yeah, this is we're starting to turn that corner into step two, the financial aid part of it. It's financial aid season and just actually over the last couple weeks, Governor Brashear actually just proclaimed the month of January being financial aid awareness month here in the state of Kentucky. And uh, the timing couldn't be better because if, if you don't take anything away, take this away. January, 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 January. We've got to get that federal aid application. It's called the free application for federal student aid, but you'll hear it referred to as the FAFSA. The FAFSA is your magic key to getting any money at all from the government, whether it's from the federal government, the state government, need-based aid from us at Kia. If you want any aid that's based on how much money the parents make, how many brothers and sisters are in the house, any of those types of uh, things, the way you get that is filing the FAFSA in January. 
Now, what you were saying about the time frame, it's extremely time sensitive here in the state of Kentucky. It doesn't matter so much for the federal money, but the way we do things here in the state of Kentucky, it's kind of a first-come, first-served basis when it comes to need-based aid grants, free money for college. The way we do it in Kentucky, we spend all the money we get, absolutely, we're, we're happy to, but once that money's gone, it's gone, and it doesn't come back until the next year. Uh, to give you an idea of how quick we've, we've got to get these FAFSAs done, January 1st is the first day that any student can file this thing, January 1st. To give you an idea, last year we ran out of all state grant money the first or second week of February. So that's why I say January, January, January. Here's what the, a lot of people don't realize, though. The FAFSA is based on financial information. It's going to ask you a lot of stuff about your tax return and stuff like that from 2013. Well, the issue that a lot of parents have is, well, We've got to get this FAFSA done in January to have a shot at getting anything from the state government to help pay for college, but I'm not going to have my taxes done in January. And, and that's how I am. I'm not going to get my W-2s and probably until the end of the month. So what we tell parents, and a lot of people don't realize this, you can file a FAFSA on estimated information. It's not, you know, I wouldn't advise anyone to wait until their taxes are done. Go ahead and get that thing submitted because that date that gets stamped on that FAFSA is the date that we look at when we start divvying out this money. So get that thing done in January. Have that January date on it. And then even if it's March or April, by the time you get your taxes done, you can always log back in and, and update it and make it correct. After the FAFSA season is over, the next thing, it, it starts quieting down a little bit over the next couple months after January. The next big uh, part of the cycle is going to be probably around early March. You're going to start getting a lot of stuff in the mail from all the colleges that you've applied to and sent that FAFSA to. And what it is is every single college you send that to, they have to send you an official financial aid award letter that's going to break down the t entire cost and also line by line what you're going to end up getting from the school and from the government to help pay for it. And then at that point, that's when a student can sit them down side by side, these letters, and figure out what is going to be the best financial decision. Keith, where can students and parents get a FAFSA form? Well, now the the website to, to do that, it's basically all online now. It's hard to find a paper copy. They're, they are still out there, but really um, what I would advise anyone to do is go online to F-A-F-S-A, FAFSA.gov. It's a government website. It's totally free to do. It's a free application. But one thing I will uh, let everyone know is just kind of beware of some scam sites out there. Uh, there are some... Uh, for-profit websites that will charge you eighty, ninety dollars to fill out the free application. So if it asks you for your credit card, they're on the wrong. You're website. on the wrong one. So fafsa.gov. F a f s a dot gov. We will also put this on our Facebook page here at Somerset 106. We're talking with Keith, Keith Ritchie this morning. He's an outreach coordinator with the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority. And when we come back, we're going to talk more specifically about keys money and how, as a student. Uh, you can possibly take advantage of that. Thanks for listening to Mid Mornings with Amy on Monday, December 23rd. Happy Monday, everybody. It's 34 degrees outside in the Somerset area, and you are listening to Mid Mornings with Amy. We have guest Keith Ritchie in the studio this morning. He is an outreach coordinator with the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority, and he is telling us this morning what we need to think about and be doing as parents and as high school seniors especially getting your financial aid money or preparation for your financial aid money in order for college. And we were talking about the, the FAFSA form. And you had mentioned, Keith, it is a need-based financial assistance form, but everybody should apply. Yeah, absolutely. And and I have a lot of parents come up to me, you know, with the question, should I file this FAFSA if I know you know, there's no way that I'm ever going to get any grant money from the government because, we, you know, we make too much money, we have too many assets, whatever the case is. And my answer is always absolutely. I would advise and, and encourage every single family to file the FAFSA, and I'll tell you why. Even if you make a billion dollars a year and have every asset in the entire world, at the very minimum, at the bare minimum, you're at least going to be offered federal government loans. And I know that no one gets really excited about any loan eligibility, but it can come in handy as a just-in-case type thing. So I do advise everyone to file the FAFSA. But beyond the loans, uh, some colleges require that every student file the FAFSA to even be determined for or eligible for scholarships. And some private scholarships that aren't tied into any college at all from a different organization, some sort of company or, or nonprofit organization, for instance, they may also qualify. Uh, 
uh, absolutely require that someone files the FAFSA to get any eligibility for scholarships. And you mentioned, Keith, that a hard copy version of the FAFSA form can be hard to find, but it is online. That's how you can fill it out. That is the best way to fill it out to ensure that it gets where it needs to go in the quickest amount of time. And that website address for the form is F A F S A dot gov. And again, we will put that on our Facebook page here at Somerset 106. Let's talk about Keys money. Everything has an acronym. Everything <laughs> has an acronym. Keys is Kentucky Educational Excellence Scholarship Money. And students beginning as a freshman can possibly qualify for Keys money and it will accumulate throughout high school. Explain how Keys money work. Well, it, it's it's our pride and joy. That that's what a lot of people recognize us with is is the key scholarship at Kia. We're the people that divvy out that money. But I got to tell you, a lot of students don't realize in the state of Kentucky how lucky they are to live in this state when it comes to Keys money. The second that any Kentucky high school or steps into high school as a ninth grader, they have the ability to rack up some serious serious money every single year of high school based on this keys program the way it works is this if a student gets a 2.5 gpa which is a c plus average if you get a c plus average you've got some keys money coming your way the way it works is at the end of every school year the guidance office lets us know how a student does and based on that we put x amount of dollars into their account so a student can rack up literally thousands of dollars when it's all said and done to be able to go to school uh, w the way it works is when a, a high school senior graduates in the state of Kentucky, they have a five-year window to use that money. We will pay for four years. Now, here's the kicker when it comes to keys money is that a student needs to go to a school, an accredited school in the state of Kentucky because it is funded through state lottery revenue. Uh, so it, it makes it really tough to take that scholarship out of state. There are some exceptions to the rule, but by and large, you have to go to a school in the state of Kentucky to get that. And this money can start accumulating for high school students when they are a freshman. So they need to be working hard as a freshman because by the time they get to be a senior, that's when all of that money will, will come into play. And you do have to have at least a 2.5. Is that right? A 2.5 minimum to qualify for keys money. Yeah, 2.5 is, you know, the lowest GPA that a student can have to get money from us. Uh, out of the keys program, but it, it's on a sliding scale. So the higher the grades, the more money. And we were talking uh, earlier that um, if a student gets straight A's all through high school, uh, 4.0 GPA all through high school, that's $8,000 in the long run that they end up getting for school. I don't think a lot of people realize how much money really is at stake. I grew up in the state of Ohio. We didn't have anything like keys money. You could get straight A's all through high school in other states, and you don't get a penny from the state government. So it's really a, a wonderful program that students have the ability to earn some money for. And it can be very very helpful mm -hmm. when paying for college and you don't have to necessarily have a 4.0 as long as you have the 2.5 minimum and an ACT score of 15 minimum mm -hmm. and they get money for both grade point average and ACT scores it's not one or the other it's both yeah absolutely so uh, if a student gets a 15 or higher on the ACT and a 2.5 or higher they'll get every single year for four years of college whatever they've earned in high school from their grades and whatever they've earned on their ACT now here's the nice thing about the ACT test we will pay you for the best score that you can provide whether that's your first time taking the test or your tenth time it doesn't matter we'll pay you for that best score that you can give us Governor Brashear, Kentucky Governor Brashear has declared January Financial Assistance Month in Kentucky because January 1, January 1 is when you need to start thinking about applying for financial aid because, as Keith has said, it will run out. It will. So the sooner the better. Get those FAFSAs done. As, as soon as that ball drops in Times Square, we can start getting these FAFSAs <laughs> Wake up in. the next morning and fill out your yeah. FAFSA form, right? <laughs> We're talking with Keith Ritchie today. He's the Outreach Coordinator with the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority, and we only have three more full days of Christmas music. So let's get back to some Christmas music and enjoy it while we can. Good mornings with Amy. We'll be right back. 